Every time a horse finishes their rehab with me, it leaves the spot open for me to go buy a new one. Every sale is different and there is no telling what I might find. It is not uncommon for me to look at three or 400 horses at a sale, but every once in a while there is one that outshines the rest. When I see a horse like this, I will definitely put them on my list. This gelding was very healthy. He even had dapples in his coat. It had been raining the night before, so it was really hard to get a look at him. I saw a few traders try and catch him, but he outsmarted everyone. I had a friend with me and we looked at each other and thought the same thing, that we could probably catch this horse. The type of sale I attend typically can have 20 to 30 horses in one pen. Catching this guy proved to be a futile task, so we gave up. At the same time, a trader that I knew came over and told me that I did not want to buy this horse. I typically don't listen when somebody tells me a horse is untrainable, but they insisted that this horse wasn't going to be worth my time. I don't really like people telling me what to do, so when this horse came through the ring, I just had to buy him. When I paid for him and got his papers, I noticed that he had a very interesting name. I give my horses some weird names, so I didn't think very much of it. But when I tracked down the trainer that brought him to the sale and I asked about this horse, his face went completely white. He apologized to me and said he was sorry I bought the horse and that he was very difficult. He had bought him as a prospect and they just could not get him halter broke. I understand the economics of being a full-time horse trainer. Horses like this one are not suitable for the majority of the horse owning population. He did say that they had a halter on him, but they were only able to put it on while he was in a chute. This is a Mustang in a similar chute to what he probably was put in. Even if they are completely wild, it is fairly easy to get a halter on him that way. Since I already knew that this colt had a very fractious mind, I decided that I would start from the ground up with him. He was really quite scared of people, but in no time he warmed up to Huckleberry and I used that to my advantage. It took me several weeks of just hanging out in his pen and letting him sniff me until I really thought he started to open up. He began to eat some grain out of a pan that I held. After his 30 day quarantine, it was time to start halter breaking this horse. Even though this guy was a domestic bred horse, he acted a lot like a wild one. He was extremely sensitive to touch. He was the kind of horse that you would be able to pet with your stick, but you could see tension all throughout his body while you were doing it. Even though he was terrified, he really tried to be brave. The auction that I bought him from was in January and we still had quite a bit of snow. Every day I do the same thing with him and eventually I noticed his body start to soften. He was no longer snorting at me when I came in his pen and I could give him scratches without him thinking about running away. It took probably about three weeks for him to start looking at me for more guidance. At this point, I just started gently moving him around the pen. He figured out how to move his bodies depending on my cues. He also became more calm with me approaching him as long as I was still a stick length distance away. At this point, I kind of got to know him a little bit better. He was pretty scared of humans, but the other thing that he was really nervous about were the geese flying overhead. One day I just started calling him Goose and that seemed to stick. I spent a lot of time approaching him and then retreating when he got too nervous. And eventually he offered our very first touch on his own terms. Even though it did frighten him a little bit, this was my cue that he was ready to move on to the next step. When I'm training a very fractious horse like this, I do not like to use a regular rope that you'll typically see people use. This is a very long, it's actually a climbing rope. If you've watched Scarlet's halter breaking journey, it is actually the same kind of setup. 
It is just one long piece of rope that you twist up to make a little bit of a neck rope. After years of working with very fractious horses, I have found that this is the best way. You can very easily take it off if they get scared and it doesn't leave any marks on them in case they get in a sticky situation. This very beginning stage of the halter breaking process can be like a dance between human and horse. Goose seemed to learn the first few steps with very little trouble. And in no time we were building on our first couple of touches with the help of the rope. With the extra security of the rope, he was getting much more brave about me approaching him. These very reactive horses can be extremely hard to train. You typically have to break down each individual part of the process to them. And if you push them too far, they will just get scared and typically run away. Goose had a very low threshold for fear. So whenever he got scared, he would just run. When something startled him, he would run away to escape whatever he was panicking from. Most of the time it would be what I did. I moved in a weird way or made a motion that he wasn't familiar with. For some reason, jumping up and down really scares these fractious horses. So it's one of the things that I do over and over again until they calm down. Tiny had to get a little cameo in too. Another little test I like to do with them after I jump around is to reach down and pretend to pick up something off the ground. That motion also has a tendency to startle these horses. He would have a few bursts of energy but then he eventually would stop and realize that what I was doing was not scary at all. After he had been fully vaccinated I could finally put a buddy in with him. This is Frisco Bill. He helps me train a lot of the young fractious horses. I continued to train Goose as the weather allowed. I always have a few horses in training so I do have to balance my time. You can see Pete and Gus tied to the trailer behind us. These untrained horses with a high flight response usually have a lot of trouble seeing you out of one eyeball. Horses have both binocular and monocular vision depending on where you're standing. I have found that once you pass their eyeball, they see you a little bit differently and that can really scare these horses. They have a harder time perceiving depth when they only see you out of one eye. I try to use my stick as a touch gradient because usually I can't get close enough to these guys to touch them with my hand. A misconception is that you are desensitizing with the stick but really you're just letting the horse know how close you are to it and this just helps them calculate where exactly you are in relationship to their body. As we moved along in training Goose got a little bit too sensitive when I made his round pen smaller. He did not like me swinging my rope around when I went to catch him and I had to change my game plan. I have found that these sensitive horses, if you push them too much, then you lose a lot of ground on them. Typically, if you just change one single thing about how you're operating, for some reason it's a little bit different in their brain and they'll calm down. Goose wasn't actually afraid of the rope, he was afraid of the throwing motion. After we got that straightened out, I was able to put a halter on him for the first time. A few days later, I was actually able to tie it. It took me exactly two months to get a halter on Goose, which is quite a bit of time for a domestic bred horse. I think there are countless benefits to taking the time it needs to take to get these horses brave enough to accept everything you do to them. I do think the end product of a horse that gets roped and pulled around is a little bit different than a horse that you allow to have a say in how fast they want to be trained. You are able to build a lot of bravery and curiosity that you wouldn't otherwise get if you were just roping them and teaching them simple pressure and release. One of the things I've noticed after dealing with a lot of these low fear threshold, high flight response horses 
is that if you don't let them get scared when they are actually scared, it can be detrimental to their training. If these horses feel threatened by something, I think it's important to acknowledge that fear and let them move around the round pen if they want to. If you do not allow them to have their natural flight response in a controlled environment, that is when these horses can become really aggressive. And a lot of times when somebody says they have a dangerous, untrainable horse, this is what has happened to them. Their flight response and fear is not acknowledged by the trainer, and their last resort is to get aggressive. Every session I had with Goose, he got a tiny bit better. He was starting to become more curious and brave, and that is when I decided to start ponying him. Goose like was over a thousand pounds when I bought him, so he was a pretty big young horse. A big hurdle for these high flight response horses can be walking in an open space and so I don't get pulled around. I think it's a lot better if I do it from a horse. In addition to staying a little bit safer, I do think it gives these young horses some more confidence. At the three month mark, I finally was able to do some work on this guy's hooves. This was the very first hoof trim that he had ever had. The Coggins test I got on him from the sale said he was three years old and since it was January when I bought him I figured he was actually probably two turning three sometime in the spring. Physically he was very mature but mentally he was not quite there yet. After about four months I was finally able to start walking up to him without the help of a neck rope and put his halter on. I began teaching him how to drop at his withers and he proved to be a very sensitive horse once again. He learned everything very quickly and as long as he was not afraid he seemed to retain all the information. Due to Goose's lack of barrier care his feet were big gigantic dinner plates. Luckily he was really easy to teach to have his feet trimmed. I teach all of my horses how to ground tie before I ever think about teaching them how to hard tie to a fence or a post or anything. I think tying a horse up and letting them figure it out is a great disservice to young horses, especially young fractious ones. Even baby Scarlet learned how to ground tie for her very first hoof trim pretty early on in her training. I am really lucky that I'm able to trim my own horse's feet. It would be extremely hard to find a farrier to come out and do a horse that is as fractious as some of the ones I get in. Goose was feeling a lot more confident with his training and he was starting to let his little personality shine through. As usual, we had a few rogue snowstorms in the spring that put the halt on his training for a while. But since he now had all the tools that he needed, it was time to start him under saddle. This was the very first time I saddled him in the spring. Although I did prepare him pretty heavily before tightening the cinch and everything, I did think that he may be one that reacted quite severely to this. He is a sensitive horse, so I was really surprised when he did not buck a single time. I got to see some of the moves that he was capable of and I was really impressed with how athletic he was. With the bulk of his hard training finished, it was time for me to get a new horse in for training. This is a horse that I bought called Leonard. He came from the same sale as Goose. This is another one that the owner said was crazy and not halter broke. They warned me several times at the sale that he was very aggressive and that I couldn't trust him. This is his first day home after the sale. He had a temperament that was very similar to Skeletor's. He was always wanting to be your friend and he was a breeze to halter break. I actually called his owners back to make sure that they had never halter broke him but they told me the first time he had a halter on was when they put it on him in the chute at the horse sale. And this is why I'm a little bit suspicious of people when they say they have a really hard to train aggressive horse. 
He was a little bit underweight, but other than that, Leonard was a super easy horse to rehab. He was extremely good-minded, and I ended up teaching him a lot of things at Liberty, which is something that I usually do not do. What it took Goose four months to learn, Leonard learned in four days. Leonard spent 60 days with me, and then he found the perfect home. I continued to build Goose's confidence with things that I thought might spook him, but he took everything in stride. Like Goose. It seemed like his one hang-up was dealing with actual humans. Slow and steady is the name of the game with a horse like Goose, so I just took it day by day and taught him new things when his brain had figured everything out. For some reason, Huckleberry loved Goose. I don't know if it was because of their early time together or what, but they were always hanging out together. Before I ride all my horses, I like to have them just feel the weight in the saddle. And Goose had one of the worst reactions I've ever gotten to it. I wasn't even close to swinging a leg over him, but he really did not enjoy it. I really stepped up my desensitizing game and shamelessly used Huckleberry to try and get Goose more comfortable. Some days I felt like I was working with two different horses, a sensitive, reactive horse who listened to everything that I was doing. He was probably one of the easiest horses for me to teach to ground drive. This is our first day and he picked everything up extremely fast. He was carrying his body very balanced and staying between the lines really well. Some horses really get scared of these lines and Goose didn't mind at all. I was starting to feel very confident that Goose would be ready for actual riding pretty soon. Since he was just a three-year-old, I really wasn't in any rush. I also don't like to ride horses that have bum wheels, so I like to make sure their feet are in tip-top condition before I actually start riding them. Goose was finally starting to put up with all of the smothering I was doing. He had spent the last six months getting a pretty solid foundation that all horses need to have. I had just sold Leonard, so it was time to bring in another new horse. I had found a really nicely bred stud horse on the internet. I went back and forth about getting him because he was 17 and had spent most of his life alone. But with Goose safe out on pasture and with a strong foundation, I felt good taking a chance on the stud. Goose finally got to go out on pasture and boy was he happy. Frisco Bill put up with his shenanigans like he does all of the other colts, but he really never bonded with Goose. With Goose being such a young, playful horse, I really wanted to find him a buddy that would help him become more comfortable in his new life. I spent the majority of the summer trying to put some training on my new stud horse. In the end, I made the difficult decision to geld him. When he was recovered, I introduced him to Goose and they became best friends almost instantly. I continued my quest to get this guy going under saddle, and it was really neat to see Goose and Whiplash bond like they did. Goose got a lot of confidence because Whiplash was so brave, and Goose taught him how to hang out around the other horses. I had completely forgot that Goose was supposed to have a brand. Although I had never actually seen it on him, I did some sleuthing on the internet and wound up getting in touch with his breeder. They sent me the cutest baby pictures of Goose and they also let me know that he was registered. They graciously sent me his papers in the mail and when I received them, I started to understand Goose's temperament a lot more. He was a double bred Hancock on top. These horses are known to be super tough and they can have a tendency to buck. The Patty's Irish Whiskey on the bottom side totally explains how smart and responsive he is. Another thing I found out when I got his papers was that his age was really off. Instead of being three when I bought him, he was actually six, which made a lot more sense because I had been waiting for his baby teeth to fall out, but he had already lost all of them. 
even though he was actually a lot older than I had thought, his brain was still not very mature. He still required a very slow and steady training approach. Every new thing he needed to take a lot longer to digest than the other horses. As time went on, I continued to put more training on him as the seasons changed. Concepts that other horses learn in three or four sessions took Goose weeks and weeks. He would excel at a much faster pace if I was able to devote a bunch of days in a row to him. But when I got busy with my real job or other horses, he would regress a little bit and forget that I was really here to help him. Although not untrainable, Goose is the perfect example of a horse that ends up at an auction because he is very hard to handle. A horse like this in the wrong hands could easily injure an amateur owner and they simply don't make sense for a lot of professional horse trainers to keep in their barn long term. Unfortunately, Whiplash does get severe anxiety when Goose leaves now. It has made it almost impossible to take Goose off property and continue his training. Goose is in the same boat as Pete. Typically, they get set on the back burner while I work the other at-risk horses and move them on to their new homes. I have a lot of young horses to start under saddle this spring and hopefully you guys will stick around to see that happen. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.